You, me, and HIFMB. Stories of science and the sea. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Christmas special of the HIFMB podcast. Um, today we have a scientific fairy tale for you. Um, Gemma Martinez Mendez from episode 11 reads for you from the once upon a time uh, scientific fairy tale so these are stories with a scientific background told in a fairy tale setting and she will read the story which is by her the bremen town musician set sail and to add a bit of warmth to the already cold winter she will read the story to you in her iconic spanish accent so in the spirit of feliz navidad i give you Gemma martinez mendez and merry christmas ho 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 it is winter time. It is a great time of the year for reading or listening to stories. But maybe not only stories about Christmas, maybe stories about whatever else. For example, in an unnamed and vaguely located place somewhere close to Bremen, four old, old friends started at a bundle of luggage. They were all, since the meandering path of life, which they all left behind, was long. They were all friends, since they have lived through many adventures together. The four lived in harmony in a little house they had won a long time ago from some vile thieves, their more well-known epic tale. The warmth of the home they created was the fair compensation for a long life of hard work, Sadly, they had experienced little recognition by those who, whom they have served. The animals, however, had a high degree of understanding for their old masters. The last years had been even colder with very hard weather conditions, much colder than the previous years. The crops had failed again and again. The masters could not afford to keep animals who were getting too old for the heavy and hard-going farm work. None of them knew about it, but they were immersed in the final and very cold stages of the Little Ice Age, a cold period that lasted between the years 1275 and 1850. I cannot take it anymore, Donkey cried. The last few summers had been short and rainy, but this is by far the worst. We have not seen the sun for the whole season. Maybe we cannot even call this a summer. Can you believe it, a year without a summer? I have been telling you that I'm fed up with this call, which gets into my bones. I have been seriously considering emigrating for a long time now. I do not want to wait any longer. 1816 is my last year here, and leaving. Year after year, he was having more difficulties to cope with the cold. Working in the field in winter, autumn, spring, and even sometimes summer had been hard in his younger days. As he aged, his weakening strength made his master question his usefulness. Finally, Donkey had to leave the farm to save his life. The idea of migrating again was not appealing for him, as the animals had enjoyed a peaceful life in their little house for such a long time. But it was becoming increasingly difficult to find food for everyone, and the animals were aware that they were undermining their environment by chopping too much firewood in order to keep warm. You, 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 you will not live without us, will you? Dove Gwimper. P perhaps the call will soon go away. My great 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 grandfather told my great great grandfather, my great great grandfather told my great grandfather, my great grandfather told my grandfather, my grandfather told my father, and my father told me how much he enjoyed the heat of the summer as a puppy, and that there was only little snow in winter. Perhaps the warmth will come again soon. What a pity we do not know how the climate will develop in the next few years, he whimpered again. It would be so convenient to have a few predictions to know what to expect and how to act. Rooster looked at him with an understanding. It will indeed be a great help to know what to expect. He was worried. He did not want his little family to break apart. And with his fatted plumage, he feared he could not survive a long trip. He did not want to leave the vicinity of Bremen. 
He looked at Kat with concern, but he could not meet her gaze. This was lost in the remoteness of the white forest across the window. It is her defense mechanisms, thought Roster. She doesn't want us to see the sadness in her eyes. The only one here who does not have troubles with expressing his emotions is Doc. Poor darling, as he moans, he passes on his sorrow. He had seen that one coming as the patient of Donkey was running low. What a stubborn fellow Donkey was. This evening was not extraordinary, as the animals have had these conversations for days, weeks and months after the failed summer. The climate plays a central role in every creature's life, and if one is adapted to a lifestyle in accordance to certain climatic conditions, it will be difficult to adapt to rapid changes, especially if you are not aware of them or if you do not, do not know in which direction they will go and when these changes will take place. Cat turned around, looked at each of them one by one, and for the first time in many nights, she contributed to the discussion. Or rather than contributed, she finished it. Donkey, living now is crazy. You will freeze to death. In spring, we, all of us, he looked specifically at Roster, will live. We will go to the south. We will seek the sun. We are going to Mallorca. And so, with the new joy of knowing or believing themselves owners of their destiny again, our four friends enjoyed the remaining winter. They went out, wrapped up in warm clothes, to skate, engage in countless snowball fights, read and tall stories of fear and laughter. Mentally, they prepared for a much longer journey than the one which brought them to their little house in the forest a long time ago. In the spring, the animals were ready. They were stocked up with food, the roads were clear, and the days grew longer. Kat was the first to cross the threshold of their little house, and all the other animals followed her. Cheerfully and enthusiastically, the group started their journey. The first destination was the great harbor of Amsterdam, where they would embark upon a ship hidden to the Mediterranean. They arrived safe and sound to the harbor. They jumped, excited, into the first ship they saw, and set sail. Ah, the smell of the sea, the breeze in the face. What a delight, adventure, guys. Mallorca await us, they all cheered. And the minutes, and the hours, and the days, and the weeks, and the first month, and the second month went by and they continued sailing and sailing and sailing. And it was cold and it was hot, and they sailed through travel waters, and they saw whales, and they saw many kinds of seabirds, and it was cold again, and it was hot again. One boring afternoon, Donkey cautiously approached Cat. So, Cat, I passed by the bridge a while ago, and I saw the navigation charts on the table. Um, I took one and a sextant. Mm hmm. And. Well, it is just that. Well, maybe it is a guess. I cannot be sure. Maybe I have the wrong interpretation of the sextant reading. But according to this navigation chart, if it is a navigation chart, it is. Uh, well, it is my humble opinion that... What on earth are you trying to say, Donkey? Spit it out! Cat snap. Okay, okay, but do not be angry. Uh, I believe that we are in the Pacific Ocean. And well, if you think of it, it makes sense, because Mallorca is not that far from Bremen. We will have already arrived a long time ago, I think. Oh... Oh no, you're right. We took the ground ship. Well, never mind. We have had some bad luck again, and we may, may not arrive at the planned destination. It doesn't matter. Until now, we had been go doing well. We will find a solution. Oh, oh no, you're right. We took the ground ship. Well, never mind. We have had some bad luck again, 
and we may not arrive at the planned destination. It doesn't matter. Until, na until now, we have been doing well. We will find a solution. Doc, jumping excitement. In the Pacific Ocean? That is cool, dude. That is even better than Mallorca. We can settle on a tropical island. We can live in a little hut by the ocean and watch the waves every morning when waking up. How cool is that? Roster was not so excited. After all, he had never wanted to leave the surroundings of Bremen. I knew that leaving our little house was a bad idea. Now we are stuck on a ship whose, de whose destination we do not know in a huge ocean. How exactly are we going to find your tropical island paradise, Doc? Um, well, with the navigation chart and the sextant, said Donkey. I'm sure we can find an island. According to the chart, there must be lots nearby. They call them atolls. They are like a ring of land with a lagoon inside. Let's take one of the safety boats boots and have a look ourselves. Well, we, with the navigation chart and the sextant, said Donkey, I am sure we can find an island. According to the chart, there must be lots nearby. They call them atolls. They are like a ring of land with a lagoon inside. Let's take one of the safety boats and have a look ourselves. They look at Kat with expectation. She nodded. The four friends left the ship on one of the safety boats in search of tropical islands. The waves fell much stronger in the small boat and the group was filled with excitement, just like when they had first sailed from Amsterdam. Not long after they set off, however, the weather began to change. Sometimes in the tropical latitudes of the Pacific, an atmospheric anomaly meets the warm ocean waters and becomes a tropical storm, or even a hurricane. Little did they know, but our four sailors were about to discover how this ghoul feel. The boat began to rock more and more with each coming and going wave, and the torrential rain was filling the boat fast. The friends had to hold onto anything they could, the banks, the length, and each other to prevent being thrown overboard. The hull of the wind made it almost impossible to communicate. Donkey, with his fur, sock, and eyes watered from the wind, struggled to steer the small boat. Another large wave panted the boat, and the helm hit Donkey on the forehead. Plum! A bump immediately emerged on his forehead. He lost his balance, and Doc just managed to grasp him in time to prevent his friend falling overboard. However, rescue did little good, as a new panning from the waves turned the boat upside down, throwing all into the furious waters. The animals struggled in the water. They felt themselves sinking, tasting, and shallowing the salty water and fighting to stay afloat amongst the huge waves. The four friends panicked. With the last breath in her lungs, Kat looked around and thought, the deep ocean is like a starry night, dark and with points of light, the bioluminescent of some tiny marine creatures. Rosted closed his eyes to the dark night. Doc closed his eyes to the dark night. Donkey brushed all of them with his tail with one last thought of sun and tropical beaches and closed his eyes to the dark night. Will this be the wet end of the famous Bremen musicians? Will the story only know about their epic battle against the thieves? Kat opened her eyes and stared at the stars of the sea. Beautiful vision, she thought. Same because of all the moisture. I do not like to wait. Hey, wait! I am not in the water. Where am I? There is sand under my body and real stars about my head. She looked around excitedly. Donkey, Rusty and Doc were lying a few meters away, and she ran to awake them. Boys, wake up! We're alive! 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 Soon, the new day broke. After a storm comes a calm. The sun smiled at them from the blue sky, and the tropical white suns caressed their furs. They found the boat, the navigation chart and the sextant on the beach. They were thus able to deduce that they were in some atoll of Kiribati. They rather seemed to be 
on an isolated beach. There was no evidence of an inside lagoon and the beach proved to be shorter than expected once they had explored it. This is strange, said Roster. According to the navigation chart, there are many atolls here. It says nothing of an arm of sand. Either we are wrong on, or this island is not shown in the chart. They decided to get back to sea. According to the chart, there were many atolls around. Surely they will find one where to make a new home. But that was not the case. They sail and sail and sail and sail. They only found small spits of sand which look like submerged atolls. It is puzzling, reiterated Rostert. It seems as if the ocean had shallow all of these atolls of the chart. It seems as if the whole archipelago of Kiribati had disappeared. Finally, they decided to go ashore on an island that seemed to be a, a little bigger. There, they met a girl. She was very surprised about meeting the famous and Asian Bremen town musicians there, in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Candela, that was her name, told them that yes, they had arrived to Kiribati, or what remained from Kiribati. From the old archipelago of atolls and one island, only that bit of Banaba, the island, remained about sea level. She told them that the majority of the population emigrated in the year 2050 because the rise of sea level was reducing the quality of life by, by affecting the crops through the salinization of groundwater and the loss of land. Besides, security during stormy periods was becoming a big issue. In the year 2080, the few remaining inhabitants abandoned the last atolls and Banaba. Candela decided to go back to the little piece of dry land that is still picked out of the sea as a tribute to her recently deceased grandfather, who was one of the last to leave the island. Year 2050? Year 2080? How can that be? asks our little animals. Since we all know that in stories, sometimes inexplicable and wonderful things can occur, something miraculous had occurred in the night of the storm. Our friend's lives had not only been safe, but they had also awake 300 years later in the year 2116. Candela told them that things had changed extremely since 1816 and they had missed a lot of events because of their time travel. She explained then that humans had invented plenty of things which made life much easier, and therefore the number of people on Earth increased enormously. But they did not pay attention to the environment. Better and stronger houses were built with heating, with air conditioning, and vehicles to travel faster and more comfortably by land, sea, and air, Humans invented every kind of useful and useless objects for the house, better clothes, devices for computing, for listening to music, for taking images, for watching images, for communicating. Oof, so many things. For producing those objects, big industries were needed, and during manufacturing, many gases were emitted to the atmosphere, thereby contaminating it. Aside from the atmosphere, also lands and waters were contaminated with waste from the industries and other rubbish. Mountains of ravines became common features of landscapes in substitution of forests, many of which had been destroyed. In a nutshell, humanity lived without making In a nutshell, humanity lived without taking any care of keeping what they had, ignoring the renovation time of resources and losing all notions about what means quality of light and what is disproportionate consumerism. As a consequence of these actions and others, a global warming started to take place. Many scientists and people who were worried about the future and humankind spent many years worrying about the risks at play. But people took too long to accept these facts and kept continuing with the same lifestyle. As a consequence of these actions and others, a global warming started to take place. Many scientists and people who were worried about the future of humankind and other living beings 
spent many years warning about the rigs at play. But people took too long to accept this fact and kept continuing with the same lifestyle. In this way, step by step, atmosphere temperatures rose and the waters of the ocean warmed and increased in their volume. The melting water of the polar ice caps and of continental glaciers flow into the ocean. Many lands flooded, for example, the archipelago of Kiribati. Many people were living at the coast and consequently many social problems were generated by the loss of coastal land. Candela also told them about the agreement between the country of Kiribati and other countries to be welcomed as climate emigrants. With sadness, she explained them the telling of her grandfather about the final moment when he left the island. Everybody was living with tears in their eyes and helplessness in their hairs because of the feeble attempts to mitigate the effects of human-driven climate change. In the end, there were too few efforts that were made to change the prevailing way of living, which was abusive for the environment, despite so many warnings. She also spoke about the inertia of the system, as many of the changes will continue to take effect for many, many more years. The animals were impressed by her explanations and amazed about all the funny devices Candela had with her. They would have never thought that humans would be able to make so many changes to a planet and be so blind about them. They remembered the call that they had left behind in time and space in the vicinity of Bremen. They also remembered their thoughts back in the days of if at least we knew what to expect, we could act accordingly. What a foolishness to have ignored so many warnings about the effect of global warming. These thoughts plunged them into a meditative silence. Candela said goodbye and dived into the water. After a while, Doc finally broke the silence. Candela said goodbye and dived into the water. After a while, Doc finally broke the silence. Guys, if what Candela says is true, there are no more extremely cold summer, springs, autumns and winters in Bremen anymore. Let's go home. Perhaps the climate there is now similar to what my great-great-great-grandfather told my great-great-grandfather, my great-great-grandfather told my great-grandfather, my great-grandfather told my grandfather, my father told my father, and my father told me. Cock-a-doodle-doo! Clack Roster. It is the best idea I have heard in months or centuries. cock a doodle doo We go home. Donkey joined the cheers with loud hee-haws. Hee-haw! 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 Bremen! 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 Oh, well. Meow. I do not want to be a party pooper, but if Candela is right, the navigation charts have changed, and I do not know if we will be able to make such a long journey on our boat, especially now that we know that from here to Australia or Asia, there are many sunken islands under the sea. Oh, what a disappointment. Archis, it is true, said Roster. Donkey, why don't you teleport us like the unicorns do, proposed Doc Thrill. Huh? Because I am a donkey and not a horny horse? Well, it was only an idea. There were a few moments of silence. The initial enthusiasm and joy gave way to an uncomfortable stillness. Cat's head was spinning around a thought. She pulled away for a moment and returned with an oar from the boat. Cat, why do you look at me like that? Sometimes you fright me. Get that feline look away from me, said Donkey. Cat, what are you doing? Where are you going with the oar? Cat, do not come any nearer. I do not like your look, Cat. Blum! Cat hit Donkey with all her strengths on the forehead. Soon the bump that Donkey had gotten on his head during the storm and which was almost cured began to grow and grow and grow. And it almost seems like a horn. Now, donkey, think of Bremen with all your strength. Think of the attic of our home. Boys, get closer. Let's grab his tail. And um, since we all know that in stories sometimes inexplicable and wonderful things can occur, 
A donkey with a bump on the forehead can have as many powers as a unicorn. This was a sadly cat's thinking that maybe that had happened during the storm, and thus she tried to prove her theory. Dog's idea was not so wrong after all. Thus, donkey, dog, rooster and cat opened their eyes in their small house close to Bremen, luckily in the attic, as the ground floor was flooded. Rooster soon put two and two together and understood why Cat had insisted on the attic. Ouch! The thing is, sea level has also risen here, and we do not think about it before coming home. Bremen and most of its surroundings are, or were, only a little about sea level, and therefore many places are now flooded. Once more, we have had some bad luck. Mm, we are going to need some time to get up to date about all those events Candela told us about. Doc quickly intervened before pessimists could enter the house. Every cloud has a silver lining. Before the storm, we were dreaming of our new floating home on a paradisiacal Pacific island and watching the waves each down. Now we have some kind of Mars on our doorstep. Furthermore, we know what to do to keep it and enjoy many more years together. Do not abuse the environment and do not litter our own house. He put his head outside the window. Mmm, enjoy the smell of the marsh, Roster. Mmm, all took a deep breath and a smile. Much remained to be done to refit their little house to the new conditions. Our friends got their pots to it with hard work and good humor. Now they knew what to expect and how to act accordingly. What could go wrong? And that's all, folks. This is the end. Want to dive deeper? Surf over to hifmb.de or follow us on Twitter at hifmb underscore ol.